Welcome back to Ghost Spire Entertainment. I'm your host, Kanan Becker, and today we do another deep dive into Hulu. And let's get to the list. Piggy is a 2022 Spanish horror thriller written and directed by Carlotta Peretta and based on the 2019 short film of the same name. It stars Laura Gallen, Richard Holmes, and Carmen Machi. Sara is an overweight teen who witnesses a stranger kidnap a clique of girls that bully her regularly. When police start asking questions, Sara keeps quiet as she's torn between revealing the truth or protecting the man who saved her. This movie's been getting a lot of buzz ever since it did the film festival tour, and I had yet to see it, and so I've been really looking forward to seeing it. So as soon as it dropped on Hulu, I was really excited. And to be honest, I half expected to be disappointed because a lot of times when there's buzz about a movie, it just doesn't live up to the hype. But I've learned a long time ago to just try to go into movies with an open mind and not expect too much. But I was absolutely floored on how good this movie is. For one, it's extremely unique and original and deals with a lot of things that I've never really seen a movie deal with before, at least not in this way. It deals a lot with bullying and coming of age and just the problems that are in our society. It doesn't matter which country you're in, Unfortunately, people just deal with being bullied. I know I was really bullied growing up. I was a pretty fat kid. You can still see I got a little bit of that gut still, but I had to put up with a lot of really abusive behavior when I was growing up. So it just really helped me relate to this movie. But the performances in this movie are magnificent. Just everyone in it feels so real, so believable. And it just, it gets savage, it gets gory, it gets brutal but it's just really an entertaining movie as well as just being deep and powerful. I think it's a brilliant movie and one that I highly, highly recommend. Underwater is a 2020 sci-fi horror movie. Directed by William Eubank, it stars Kristen Stewart, Vincent Castle, and Jessica Henwick. A crew of oceanic workers working for a deep sea drilling company try to get to safety after a mysterious earthquake devastates their deep water facility. This really is one of my favorite movies from the last few years, and it still really surprises me that more people don't give this movie love. I think unfortunately because of when it came out, right as the pandemic was hitting, a lot of people never got to see it in theaters. I didn't, and so the only way to see it was streaming, and so just it kind of fell through the cracks. Yes, some people did see it, and yes, some people do appreciate it, but not like they should, because this movie is full of action, excitement, it looks fantastic, it's shot in a really unique way that really at least in my opinion, makes you feel absolutely submerged underwater. And for me, that's terrifying. Just the mystery alone of being deep on the bottom of the ocean with no idea what is around you because it's so dark, that's just an absolutely horrifying prospect. I also really enjoy the cast. I think everyone does a great job in it. And without giving anything away, there is just some fantastic surprises along the way. This is a fantastic thrill ride and one that I think is an absolute must see. happening to me I just wanted you to be perfect Matriarch is a 2022 folk horror movie written and directed by Ben Steiner it stars Jemima Ruper Kate Dickey and Sarah Paul Afflicted with a mysterious disease after surviving an overdose, a woman returns to her childhood home to confront her personal demons but instead uncovers horrifying life-changing secrets Mom? Are you okay? I had an overdose. 
I think this is a real hidden gem. I was scanning through Hulu, never heard of this movie, decided to throw it on, and wow, was I surprised. For one, I love folk horror stuff. Stuff that goes into weird, magical, mystical, just strange, creepy, kind of cultish stuff. Love movies like that. And this goes down a crazy, weird rabbit hole that just is not like you're expecting it to be. It doesn't deal with things exactly like you're thinking it will. But it's a lot of fun. It also deals with body horror and dark imagery. This is one I think you really need to see. So definitely add it to your list. Days of Night is a 2007 horror movie directed by David Slade and is based on the comic book miniseries of the same name. It stars Josh Hartnett, Melissa George, and Danny Houston. After an Alaskan town is plunged into darkness for a month, it is attacked by a bloodthirsty gang of vampires. This is one of the most badass vampire movies ever made. And every time I see it streaming somewhere, for the most part, I put it on a list because I just never think that this movie has gotten enough love, enough respect. It really should be at the very tip top of any vampire list, especially when you're talking about the most savage, gory, badass ones. Because the vampires in this, they don't play games. These are not your twilight, sexy vampires. These are brutal, ruthless, bloodthirsty, just awful creatures. It's much more akin to the original vampires, the Strogoi, just the old world legends and folk tales that were told about them. They were much scarier, grotesque, just horrible beings of death. And so I love that this movie takes it in that direction. It makes vampires scary again. And I wish that we could get some more vampire movies like this. I don't understand why we don't get more vicious, savage versions of vampires. Not nearly like we should. Either way, it's one of my favorite movies ever. And even if you've seen it, it's great for a rewatch. So definitely check it out. Is that how it ends? Who said anything about ending? House of Darkness is a 2022 comedy horror movie. Directed by Neil Labute, it stars Justin Long, Kate Bosworth, and Gio Crovatin. When Hap offers a woman that he just met at the bar a ride home, his night takes a dark, twisted turn when he learns she lives in a mysterious, creepy castle. <laughs> What's that? Is somebody here? Not that I know of. This movie was a lot of fun. I had heard a few of you guys mentioning that I need to check it out, and I've been planning on it for a while, and finally got a chance to when I was putting this list together. Once again, I was really pleased to see the selection that Hulu has going right now. For the first time in a while, they have some really, really good movies. But this is kind of a strange, unique movie. It has a real wry sense of humor, not a real overtly funny story. And from the beginning, you pretty much know what's gonna happen it does take a few twists but for the most part you have an idea of what's going on but it's not really about that it's much more about the dialogue about the little cat and mouse game that this woman is playing with him because justin long once again just plays this idiot he's drunk and horny and not thinking with the right head and it's just a lot of fun because of that but it isn't like constant jokes it's more situational humor and just a pleasant movie that really takes you down this fun rabbit hole it doesn't have a ton of action it's much more of a dialogue movie like i said but it isn't boring whatsoever i wouldn't even call it a slow burn because it does have some things that happen that break things up as well as the characters involved i mean to me, I can watch Justin Long in an empty room just talking and be entertained. So I think if you enjoy Justin Long and you enjoy that fun little banter that he does in a lot of his movies, as well as performances by these other fantastic actors, I think you're going to really enjoy this movie because he's really the star, but kind of the butt of a joke in a way in this movie. I had a great time with it and absolutely think it's worth your time.
Dash Cam is a 2021 live stream horror movie directed by Rob Savage. It stars Annie Hardy, Amir Chada Patal, and Angela Inhoro. At the beginning of the pandemic, an indulgent, self-deluded, live-streaming improv musician abandons LA for London, where she makes the wrong decision to give an elderly woman a ride home who is not what she appears. I'm Annie Hardy, and you're watching Van Car. Another day in paradise. So I've heard this movie getting a lot of shit, and it honestly turned me off to it. It was why it took me so long to check it out, because even though I have heard a lot of people saying they had a good time with it, I've heard as many or more say how much they hated it, because I try to avoid all of the pandemic stuff and a lot of the debate on if you should get vaccinated or not or wear a mask or not or any. I try to avoid all that. I am burned out completely on all that stuff. I'm just not really interested to see any of that in my entertainment. But if it's done right, like in the movie Sick, then I think it's worth watching. I think it's entertaining as long as it's done right. And this is strange because the first half of this movie, you literally want to kill this lady. She is so annoying and takes advantage of her friend and just does one horrible thing after another of just complete selfishness. And she's deluded and, and borderline evil in some regards. Like you're just, what is wrong with this lady? But it honestly ends up being an extremely entertaining, surprising, very fun movie. But I do get that for a lot of people, you might not even make it to the halfway point where it does start to get crazy and fun. Because like I said, she is very obnoxious. But I do see why. Like by the end of this movie, I do kind of get what they were going for. There is this funny satire that I think a lot of people miss. But I think it's also to do with you got to get all the way to the end. You got to watch this entire movie to kind of understand what the filmmakers were trying to do with this movie, because there very much is a sense of humor to this whole thing. But regardless of all that, this movie gets bloody, gory, surprising, fun, and just an entertaining ride if you can just hang in to that halfway point. But if that's not your jam, don't worry about it. I don't think that everybody should watch every movie that I put on these lists. I try to tell this to people all the time. like. I just recommend these movies and I try to make it as wide as I can to, to hopefully find something for everyone. If you could find one movie on my list, then I feel like I did my job. I'm not expecting everybody out there to enjoy everything that I that I put on these. I really don't. I, I would be shocked, honestly, if you enjoy everything that I suggest. Either way, if this has piqued your interest at all and sounds like something you would have fun with, then definitely check it out. Sometimes, that small thought is all it takes to lose control. Possessor is a 2020 sci-fi psychological horror movie written and directed by Brandon Cronenberg. It stars Andrew Risenboro, Christopher Abbott, and Rosef Sutherland. The story is about an assassin who performs her assignments by possessing the body of other people, but finds herself struggling to control the body of her current host. Ready? This was one of my absolute favorite, favorite movies in 2020. It surprised the hell out of me because honestly, I didn't even know that Brandon Cronenberg was a thing, so to speak. I didn't know that the son of David Cronenberg was making movies. I had never heard of his first movie, which now I have. Antiviral is fantastic as well. But I didn't know anything about him. So when I saw this, I didn't even know it was anything to do with the Cronenberg. And I just was floored. It's got all the sci-fi, crazy body horror stuff that I love as well as gore. It's violent. It's creative and unique and original. It's performed extremely well by everybody involved. And it definitely has that futuristic vision that only a Cronenberg can have. And with the recent release of Infinity Pool, I am just becoming more and more a fan of Brandon Cronenberg all the time. And as much as I did like Infinity Pool, I still think Possessor to this point is his best movie because Antiviral is great, so is Infinity Pool, but Possessor is just so well written. The style, the pacing, everything about it just feels sleek and streamlined and just masterfully put together. I think that it's an absolute sci-fi horror masterwork and one I highly, highly recommend. This is exactly what he's been waiting for. Run! 
Don't you ever feel like you're seeing something that you're not supposed to? Come True is a 2020 Canadian sci-fi horror movie. Written and directed by Anthony Scott Burns, it stars Julia Sarah Stone and Landon Liberon. The story follows a teenage runaway who takes part in a sleep study that becomes a nightmarish descent into the depths of her mind and a frightening examination into the power of dreams. You'll be okay to attend for the full two month period? Yes. So we really just show up and sleep. We just need you lying there in REM. REM, the stage of sleep where we dream the most vividly. This is one of those movies that it just blows me away that no one ever talks about it. But sadly, it's kind of the deal with indie horror movies that just don't get much budget. And so they're not promoted at all. Like this movie had zero promotion. I honestly just stumbled across it while going through Hulu one day. I have never heard anyone talk about it to this day and I just don't get it because it's so well done it is very small it doesn't have crazy special effects or or wild story things going on it's a more simple small kind of vision of a movie but it's so well put together because it really hinges on its story and you have to hang in there and it is a little bit slow but it's very creepy and unnerving and as the story goes it becomes more and more twisted and I promise you it's gonna take some twist and it's gonna go into direction by the end that you are not going to see coming. It's well performed, well directed. I love the pacing of it. It's just a great little movie and especially for such a small tiny film it does really reach in some crazy unique ideas and concepts. I love this movie and absolutely think you need to see it. your god she was here long before the apes started dreaming of gods Gaia is a 2021 South African ecological horror movie directed by Jakob Bauer with a screenplay by Tidius Kapp it stars Monique Rockman Karel Nell and Alex Van Dyke the story follows a park ranger who takes shelter with two survivalists after being attacked by a mysterious creature in a primordial forest I saw this a couple summers ago in theaters, and I've loved it ever since. Yes, it's a slow burn, so I get that it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I think it's a, just a beautifully done movie. I've become a big fan of ecological horror. It's kind of a newer thing that you're starting to see more and more movies of. There was also a movie called In the Earth that came out a couple summers ago, like right around the same time that... Gaia did and I just really enjoyed both of them I get that they are slow but they're one of those movies that just gets under your skin and they become more and more haunting more and more creepy and unnerving and it just goes into this crazy directions where it almost feels like you're on some form of hallucinogen but the main thing about this movie that is just amazing is the visuals this movie is gorgeous just the way that it's shot even the way they zoom in on a leaf with a drop on it it just looks gorgeous and to me that that makes it so worth watching but I think this movie is really well told and if you get in the right state of mind and just can kind of slow down your way of thinking and can get into this slow burn style that this movie is done in I think you'll absolutely enjoy it I just think if you're into indie slow burn horror this is one you absolutely can't miss The Jacket is a 2005 sci-fi psychological thriller directed by John Maybury and loosely based on the 1915 novel The Star Rover. It stars Adrian Brody, Kara Knightley, Chris Christopherson, and Jennifer Jason Lee. A Gulf War veteran can't explain why he's been found at the scene of a murder. Ordered to a mental hospital, he's subjected to an unusual treatment plan, which involves mysterious injections, sensory deprivation, and confinement in a straitjacket, which causes him to discover he has the ability to travel to the future. Oh, I've been raving about this movie ever since it first came out because I think it's brilliant and it's one of those movies that it's surprising how many people I've mentioned it to that have never even heard of it, much less seen it. 
Because if you're a fan of sci-fi, especially ones that are tinged a little more into the thriller horror side, you are definitely going to enjoy this movie. It goes into some really wild, futuristic, strange directions, imagery that's really, really cool, but it also has this really grim, unique story to it. Adrian Brody is fantastic in it. Like always, he just completely throws himself into whatever project he's in, and he really goes hard in this movie. But it tells a really unique, fascinating story that's full of suspense and intrigue and exciting and with action. Just a great, great movie. And I think it's perfect for your Saturday night. So grab your popcorn and your candy and enjoy! All right, guys, that's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and ding that little bell because that's the best way to keep track of this channel and when I post videos like this, and I post videos like this at least once every week. I also want to give a huge, massive, enormous thank you to the Ghost Pirate crew, to you guys over on Patreon, and to the channel members over here. You guys mean so, so, so much to me. People like you are why I'm able to do this full time. This is the first video I've shot while being a full time creator. And if it wasn't for you guys, just honestly giving me that morale, that boost, that knowing that there's people out there that no matter what, appreciate what I'm doing enough that they'll put a few bucks towards it. It just really encourages me to keep going and bust my ass to give you guys the best content that I can. And if you would like to help support this channel, there's a link down in the description where you can go over it on Patreon and for as little as $1 a month, help support me or there's a membership button right down there it says join and you could join up get a little icon of the eyeball the little eye design and then i try to get you guys both patreon and channel members early access to as many videos as i can at least a few days but i have a lot of plans things that now that i'm doing this full time hopefully i'll be able to do more and more but like always thank you so much for watching please crush that like button and remember guys Horror can be fun! And if you enjoyed this, click right here to see 10 brilliant movies over on Shudder. And I'll see you guys next time!